in my amateur career I beat three Cubans by KO so I looking forward to put fourth Cuban on my list so I will just continue to do that in professionals heavyweight contender Filip Hregovic is looking for an opponent to compete against for the IBF final title eliminator after news broke out the third top 10 or top 15 heavyweight in a row declined the offer to fight El Animal now it's way too early to call Filip Hregovic the boogeyman of the current heavyweight division however it's clear that for whatever reason many fighters do not fancy the Filip Kregovic fight as of right now. Hey, what's going on, ringsiders? This is your host, Boxing Subjective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Or if you're new, we make content regarding boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, takeaways, and much more. So if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support in advance, and welcome to the channel. Now, when it comes to getting a crack at any of the top heavyweights, Filip Hregovic is long overdue a shot. Most of you would ask, Filip who? Let's back up. Born in Zagreb, Croatia, Filip Hregovic stands at at six foot six, has an 82 inch reach, sporting a professional record of 14 wins, zero losses, 12 wins coming by way of stoppage since turning pro in September of 2017. He has an icy cool demeanor. We are warriors, all, all our history, we have been warriors, small country, but big heart. You don't see Croatia so much. So to become heavyweight champion of the world, it will be like miracle. And I believe I have all the tools. Balkan swag. They call me animal as well. Really? For what? For uh, for eating. <laughs> okay, everyone needs to be animal in uh, his job. And an air that is reminiscent of former WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Vitali Klitschko. I had a very good and long amateur career. And I think I can compete with everyone in the world. I think I'm a better fighter than Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, I spar with him. I think I'm the most complete fighter in the division. So even seven fights in, you believe you have the beating of Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua right now? Yeah, I can beat them, 100%. Is it arrogance or does Filip Hregovic know something most people don't? Where does his confidence come from? Well, unlike the aforementioned former world champions Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, Filip Hregovic had a solid amateur career of close to 100 fights that saw him win the IBA Youth World Championship in 2010, where he beat the likes of Joseph Parker and 2016 Olympic gold medalist Tony Yoka. Hregovic won the European amateur title in 2015 and captured bronze at the 2016 Rio Olympics. As an amateur, Filip Hregovic holds wins over 2000 2008 Olympic gold medalist Roberto Camarela and current heavyweights Eli Eren Demirezen and Sergey Kuzmin. Herga has sparred Deontay Wilder in this clip where the then 19 year young Filip Hregovic more than held his own against the bronze bomber. That same camp, Hregovic sparred David Hay, who was on the receiving end of a huge cut over his eye that forced the Haymaker to postpone the highly anticipated bout between himself and Tyson Fury, a fight which unfortunately never happened. And in 2014, Filip Hregovic sparred Kubra Pulev ahead of the Cobra's unsuccessful challenge for the Unified World Championship against Vladimir Klitschko. Now as a pro, Filip Hregovic has fought a bunch of journeymen the likes of Amir Mansour, Eric Molina, and Kevin Kingpin Johnson. Though never been past eight rounds, the Croatian giant has been climbing the IBF rankings for a while and is currently ranked number two in the IBF, yet has failed to secure a fight against one of his contemporaries. Here's a timeline. April of 2021, Matchroom wins a purse bid for Filip Kregovic versus Michael Hunter, which signifies the IBF final title eliminator. A month later, Michael Hunter declines the Kregovic each fight and moves in another direction. It is what it is. Uh, the fans, you know, they still love me. <laughs> uh, you know, so I mean, you know, it's all you're always going to get criticism for, uh, you know, for something that people want to see you do. But you know, I'm, I'm here for me and uh, trying to do the best I can do uh, for myself right now. So when we're talking about business moves, uh, you know, it kind of didn't make any sense. Uh, you know, I was really trying to win the battle for the first bid. 
and uh, we just took another route. In terms of fights in 2021, the bounty stepped into the ring with unheralded Mike Wilson and Jerry Forrest, who Michael Hunter already beat in 2014. This rematch, however, was a 10-rounder in which many will conclude Michael Hunter got away with a split decision draw. Quite underwhelming considering the fact Hunter already fought the likes of Alexander Povetkin, Sergei Kuzmin, Martin Bacoli, and Alexander Usyk, the latter being at cruiserweight. Even if Hunter's decision in 2021 was business oriented, what business did Michael Hunter actually do? How is his stock rose after those two fights, especially after openly declining the fight for the IBF final title eliminator against El Animal aka Filip Hiregovic? Fast forward to January 2022, where Luis King Kong Ortiz KO'd IBF's number one ranked Prince Charles Martin. Wait, every heavyweight is in the line. Wanna fight Andy Ruiz? You know, wanna fight uh, Dylan White? Fury doesn't got no opponent. I'm ready for anybody. Ortiz does not mention Filip Gregovic, who represents the shortest path to a world title for Luis Ortiz. I think it was message for me because I'm the first one in the line for that IBF eliminator. I, I hope he will stay in that mindset next few days and that we can make the fight. Team Ortiz comes out, openly declines the IBF final title eliminator against Filip Gregovic, citing an injury. Regardless though, all of the false narratives surrounding Luis Ortiz these being avoided or being called the boogeyman of this current heavyweight division can be put to bed as of right now. Do you know why he's turning this fight down with you for the eliminator? Of course I know why. Because he don't want the smoke, man. And I would have loved to see Ortiz versus Kiregovic because it would have been a real step up and we would have seen how good El Animal really is. And it would be a good chance to see if Ortiz will be able to trouble test or maybe even expose Filip Gregovic a little bit as Ortiz has ring IQ, a lot of experience and still packs a punch. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely confident that I can beat Luis Ortiz. I respect him. He had great career and he's a good fighter but now it's time for retirement and I'm ready to send him into retirement. Well, well deserved retirement. I'm really confident I can beat him in great fashion. It wouldn't have just been a final title eliminator. A win for either fighter would have been great. I mean, Filip Hregovic is a tall, ambitious, experienced, powerful and improving fighter who has youth on his side on top of his major physical advantages over the Cuban Southpaw. Vice versa, beating Luis Ortiz would be against an aging fighter who was at the tail end of his career. Yes, a good win for Hrega nonetheless. Since Team Ortiz passed up on Hregovic, next in line was former WBO heavyweight world champion Joseph Parker whose team quickly declined the Hregovic fight. Given Joseph Parker's name, given the fact he's a former world champion, I do understand the risk-reward ratio. And as the Derek Chisora rematch on December 18, 2021 proved, the Kiwi has still a lot left in his tank. The fight itself was great. Joseph Parker boxed a great fight. You know, give a shout to Andy Lee, you know. He's um, made a great fight out of Joseph. You know, I think he'll do well. Because Joseph Parker is one of those fighters that I admire. Um, I've watched all of his fights from turning pro. He's took good, good learning fights along the way. Fight anybody, anywhere, and has always come through. He's skillful and he's tough because I hit him with some punches. He got dropped and he got up and he dropped me. He loses all the way to go. This man's got a massive future and a massive career. With all that being said, as of today, Joseph Parker has avoided Filip Hregovic. And that's disappointing, really, since Parker fights on the same network, has the same promotional outfit as Filip Hregovic, and seemed not only in good spirits, but also a new ambition right after his dominant win over Derek Chisora. Well, to be honest, I don't really care who it is. Uh, anyone, you know, just I think as a heavyweight or as a fighter, I just want to be involved in big fights and give it everything, everything that I have, like last night. Now again to the Kiwi's defense, although an enticing stylistic matchup between two young heavyweights who have some history in the amateurs, Joseph Parker versus Filip Gregovic is not a big fight. Although a fight would have been right up the alley, at least according to Parker's newfound trainer Andy Lee. If it's not a title fight, then it should be a development fight. From from right, because he's right there. I would I would like to keep Joe developing. He's still learning. He's still improving. 
it's only going to get better. Now, if the goal is to improve Joseph Parker and he's not involved in a world title fight next, why not test his newfound skills against Filip Gregovic, a tall, powerful, young, hungry heavyweight with similar dimensions as Anthony Joshua, who handed Joseph Parker his first loss and would post interesting challenges. Now, if Parker's goal is to regain a world title, then the fastest route would have been to face and beat Filip Gregovic in that IBF final title eliminator. And it's been over a decade since the two have fought. So from that point of view, it would have been interesting to see the progress of both Joseph Parker and Filip Gregovic. Although it has to be said, both fighters are in different phases of their professional boxing careers. So is Filip Gregovic the boogeyman of this current heavyweight division? I think the jury is still out on that. Many observers will argue the level of competition Filip Gregovic has fought so far, which there's a fair point to be made, especially taking into consideration consideration Jerga hasn't been past eight rounds hasn't been tested thus an unknown commodity in the heavyweight division that said Filip Gregovic is looking for an opponent to compete against for the IBF final title eliminator the idea of just thinking about that in a competitive sport as boxing is just bizarre really because even though as a pro El Animal is only a dozen fights in, Filip Gregovic has been turned down by three top 10 or top 15 level fighters, Michael Hunter, Luis Ortiz, and now Joseph Parker. He fights everybody like 300 ranked and I'm like top 40, he doesn't want to fight me, no. I offered myself many times, but he and his whole team are cowards, you know, they just look on the easiest way to make money. And he's going to disappear from boxing. He's going to go and do nothing good for boxing. I don't want to give him a chance to make money from my my name. I'm just going to get some money and run away from it. You're going to see it. But I'm going to get to him, you know. That fight is open for me, you know. I said I want to fight him in Croatia. I want to bring match to Croatia. I want to be, I want to, I want to do big things, you know. He's just an idiot. He doesn't understand what I want to do. You know, he's re re really stupid. You gotta understand. So only way he can get it, winner take it all, because he making too much already with my name. He mentioning me every day, <laughs> and he's just behave like a retarded man. So he only can get KO in few rounds, nothing else. Let's see what 2022 has in store for Filip Gregovic and if he has what it takes to become a force in this heavyweight era, if he can prove the doubters wrong and prove himself right. But I think I'm a better fighter than Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. I think I'm the most complete fighter in the division. These are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let us know what you make of Filip Gregovic as a fighter so far. If you enjoy this kind of content and you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. It helps out the channel a lot, i.e. inspire us to make more quality content for y'all. As always, thank you so much for your support and welcome to Ringside Stories. Now, if you've done that already, you're amazing. We already know that you are the true undisputed world champion. Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective objective observer with ringside stories thanks for watching and have a legendary day